When I was growing up, Sunday was... We welcome viewers on BBC One to this BBC News special as we await the departure of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and their new Middleton. Here they come. We welcome viewers on BBC One to this BBC News special as we await the departure of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and their new baby prince. Uh, just a warning, uh, the flash photography is inevitable as they leave uh, and we would like to warn viewers that if you've seen flash photography before, it's unlikely to be anything like you're about to see now. With me now, our Royal Correspondent, Nicholas Witchell, and after, well, it seems a long wait, uh, I'm sure it has been a long wait for the Cape Middleton, here they come. Tied St Mary's Hospital, and what is happening now is they're going to put the baby into a car seat, aren't they, Nick? And we'll see them again in a moment, and they will drive off. Um, the Royal vehicles have, oh dear, we're getting up off our knees. Um, there we are, suddenly appearing. Um, yeah, they've just gone in to put the, uh, the baby in the car seat. Uh, the Royal Vehicles have moved forward, the protection officers are all ready, and it won't, I'm sure, be many moments before they come out again and just go straight off. Now, I don't know what your, Im your impression was. That was a very happy couple. It was, yeah. They were absolutely just full of the joy of the whole thing. William and Catherine equally. Now, people listening at home will have heard infinitely more of what they had to say than we did kneeling on the pavement some distance away from, from where they are. The only bit that I caught was that they were still working on a name. OK, well, that's the one factual bit. In a sense, you didn't need to hear what they were saying because the body language, the smiles, their whole demeanour said it all, didn't it? So, I mean, there may have been some factual points in there that we just weren't able to hear because photographers <laughs> shouting to other foreign broadcasters... It'll be analysed over the next 24 hours. But they were, they were just saying that the, the baby's got a good pair of lungs on it. Uh, although it seemed to sleep through them. Well, it did, didn't it? Yes, it, it, it didn't seem to be affected uh, so far as we... We're just, <laughs> we're just we're hearing... <laughs> William said it had Kate's lips. This is, a, this is something perhaps we need to hear again from there, <laughs> perhaps rather than speculate yeah. about it. But, <laughs> but yeah, as you say, Simon, the, the overwhelming impression was of uh, a young couple with their firstborn child who are just thrilled and delighted and of a child who seemed very calm and tranquil and made his first public appearance without, so far as we can see, batting one of those blonde eyelids. What was interesting was the way that William and Kate gave the photographers what they're after to. They're very media aware, very media conscious. Yes, they are. It's kind of a, a deal, a necessary deal. Uh, a certain amount of access, controlled access, always they would hope in return for which they would now hope and expect the privacy that is so important to them. But yes, they were. Uh, they realised that this is a photograph that so many people here have waited for so long and that so many people tomorrow will be wanting to look at and pour over. It is a, a, an historic photograph, the first photograph of uh, a little boy who one day will be king and all that. Um, so yes, it's important that that is just choreographed properly and that everybody gets a fair chance to get that photograph. Not that you can see very much. I mean, I could see a sort of blonde head, uh, but not a, not a whole lot more. Well, we're going to keep an eye out for them to uh, emerge once more, but let's just remind ourselves at that moment that the world was introduced to the new prince, the son of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. This is the moment they came out and left the Lindo Wing at St Mary's Hospital. Well, there we are. William carrying the car seat. He will now fit that in the back of the World Protection Car. His wife, the Duchess, sitting in the rear left seat. And William now making sure the seat is properly adjusted. <laughs> and driving off himself, and we now know they are heading to Kensington Palace, where they will spend at least the next couple of days, and where no doubt the new prince will be introduced to Her Majesty the Queen. But Prince William, huge smiles everywhere. Driving up. And already Kate looking, she was just looking into the car seat to make sure that the baby was alright. And just to remind you of the quotes that, uh, that we've had, Nick, Nick Witchell joins me again. He's a big boy, quite heavy, still working on a name. <laughs>
Yeah, I just uh, was speaking to my colleague Peter Hunt, who is much closer to, to where they were. A good pair of lungs, about as much hair as his dad seems to have at the moment. Uh, and you notice that uh, William kind of mopped his brow after he'd successfully uh, done the baby seat operation. That was achieved successfully. And then um, seat belt on and William driving them away. Uh, there was a bit of a dispute as to whose looks that the babies inherited, but they've got her look, I think, was what William had to say. Well, he would. That's a polite thing, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're in danger of trying to interpret uh, baby talk. All right, let's not. Let's just interpret, one. interpret what we've seen. We've seen two very happy people. And yes. yes, we have. You know, as I said on the 10 o'clock news last night, whether you are a supporter of the monarchy or not, and we are aware that not everyone buys into the idea of a hereditary monarchy, the overwhelming majority of people, all the evidence suggests, do, about 80%. But I think, you know, whether you support it or not, you must be touched by the sight of a joyful young couple uh, in a very special position within our country who now have a child who is third in line of succession to the throne. Uh, and their joy, I think, radiates out and uh, gives everybody a little bit of a lift. Those are images that have just been, just been beamed around the world a lot of it live to every country on this planet. And as we can see happening behind us, people just desperate to talk to each other, find out what was said, get a sense of the feeling of this. There, 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 there is, people feel part of this for, the, for this moment. And that's the way the royal family has always been in a sense. No, 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 that's not correct. Has not always been, but certainly in recent memory has been. And it's terribly important to the royal family. This is a representative monarchy. They have got to uh, ensure that the population at large buys into what they represent and respects them. Uh, and certainly at the moment, since the uh, Diamond Jubilee, since the royal wedding, now with this royal birth, I think uh, that levels of popularity and affection and respect are at an unprecedented level. Let's just remind ourselves of that.